You think that by now I'm more prepared of what is to come. But it's like every time I make some progress, something comes along and rips off all that and leaves me bare to the pain I was in that night. Never in my life did I ever think I'd be taking a HIV test for this reason. I mean, right after it happened, I managed to get myself some P2 and some PEP drugs. But what if it didn't work? What if he had the virus and it turned out to be positive? I thought escaping the pregnancy scare was enough, but this, this is something else. God, I hate him. I hate him with every fiber of my body. The most frustrating part is, every time I remember him, it's like I'm taken back to that night reliving it over and over, unable to escape the shackles that are keeping me there. I used to treasure human touch and the color blue. But now I despise both those things. Things that used to bring me comfort and love now only bring me sorrow. They no longer provide me with that feeling. Now they remind me of the unwanted touch on my body. Of his repulsive smell of the pleas that were ignored. Now they remind me of how broken I really am. <laughs> Immediately after it happened, I was so embarrassed and ashamed that I let such a thing happen to me. And I tried to convince myself that if I ignored it, then maybe it never happened. I didn't want to tell anyone because I was afraid of the backlash and the ridicule I could face. A part of me believed that if someone else knew about it, then it really happened. And that was something I was not ready to accept. By the time I came to terms and accepted that I was sexually assaulted, it was too late to go to the authorities. I didn't have any evidence that indicated I was assaulted and I knew that my word against his couldn't suffice. I was so afraid to be judged and blamed by people if they came to know that it took me a long time to be comfortable enough to share my experience with my family. There were days when I just wanted everything to go away. During those days, I yearned to experience prolonged moments of nothingness because it was better than living in a constant reminder of what happened to me. I wanted to let it all go, and in those times I contemplated ending it all. I spent days and nights crying. I became detached from life and myself. I didn't care what happened to me. I was falling into an abyss of self-hatred, pity and blame, but there was nothing I could change. Occasionally, when the emotion of pain was too much to bear, I turned to self-destructive measures to numb the pain by drinking thinking I could find refuge at the bottom of the bottle. Many times I wanted to end it all at once, but I was too much of a coward to go through with it. But now I'm glad that I was a coward during those times. I used to wonder if I could have stopped it from happening. Used to think of things I could have done differently that day. But now I know. I now know that it was never my fault. I now know that it was never my shame to carry, but his to bear.